There are tons of business podcasts to choose from, but only one has the stamp of approval. Kristen Stampini is South Florida's leading real estate entrepreneur and your trusted source for everything real estate. Okay. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Thanks for joining us. I'm so excited about our podcast. The Stamp of Approval is the name of it. And actually, my brother, Matt Anderson, who I have here today, is the one who gave us that name. So thank you, Matt. Shout out. What? (laughs) (laughs) So I'm Kristen Stampini, co-founder of the Stampini Platinum Real Estate Group with Remax Services here in Boca Raton, Florida. I'm also a certified real estate coach uh, for Craig Proctor. And you may have also heard us on the radio. I'm the owner of Global Virtual Real Estate Assistance. I'm also a real estate investor and a national trainer and public speaker and author of a couple books and also a certified inside sales agent, trainer, and coach. So my guest here today, and if you listened to our previous episode, this is the second time I brought Matt here because he's so good and so inspirational and such an amazing person at social media. Uh, The last episode we talked to Matt about was uh, Facebook, where it is today. I mean, Matt was spending on upwards of $40,000 per day and 50 percent um in social media okay marketing and 50 percent of that was uh you know basically on facebook so imagine twenty thousand or twenty five thousand a day in facebook marketing so you're talking about an expert here so matt is uh, you know a former senior social strategist for billion dollar brands Wow, such as Dr. Pepper, you know, one of the biggest telecom networks in the U.S., Metro PCS, which, you know, is owned by Team Mobile, Team Mobile. Uh, also CPG Soft Drinks Giant. He helps strategize marketing budgets on social media and companies, like I said, for up, you know, up to $40,000 a day. And about, like I said, 50% of that was, was going towards Facebook that we talked about on the previous episode. Um, he also performed social media for Ram Trucks, Tony and Guy, remember Tony and Guy, uh, Papa John's and, and over 20 other businesses. So Matt currently, you know, he's a talent manager at Bottle Rocket Management, where he's out in California, so that's where he is today, and he manages brand sponsorships and campaigns for over 25 YouTube creators. Like, what is that, YouTube creator? Uh, You know, whose followings, okay, of the YouTube creators is nearly 100 million followers plus subscribers worldwide. So I was watching one of his, the, the people that he works with. And, you know, she was talking about, oh, I was, I was just, you know, showing a little bit of my life out there on YouTube. And all of a sudden I have 1.5 million followers. Okay. So, and that's what, that's basically what Matt does is he builds companies. So today he's really going to be discussing social media, uh, where Instagram is at, what, you know, what he thinks about Snapchat in YouTube. Where are we headed with YouTube? So uh, introducing Matt as our social media uh, guru. And hey, Matt, how are you? Hey, wow. Again, that intro is second to none. <laughs> I will tell you that. <laughs> uh, well, you, 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 uh, you. you definitely deserve that intro, you know, for everything you, you do. I've really, you know, it. Matt is my little brother, but, uh, you know, I really look up. Uh, he's very inspirational uh, in the social media field and everything else. And I wish I had, you know, even a little bit of what he does in me. Okay. But so, Matt, can you kind of go into Insta? I mean, Instagram's the thing today, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, the crazy thing is when I started out about seven years ago, Instagram was only six months old. No one had really heard of it. And it was just where you could share some some of your more creative or inspirational pictures. Now, fast forward seven years, you know, Facebook now owns Instagram. And it's the second most viewed social platform on social media. So, you know, Instagram is definitely one of the kings today, if not the king. And, you know, I really see nothing but positive things in Instagram's future. I mean, it was really Instagram and Snapchat for a while, and there was a debate going back and forth. Is Snapchat going to, you know, cannibalize Instagram's followers? Are people going to, you know, go more towards Snapchat than Instagram? 
Well, if you, you know, they've done studies and I've actually just go talk to people and, you know, Snapchat is still, you know, a very popular platform, obviously. And for Gen Z, it's especially a popular platform, but not for the reasons you may think, you know, Snapchat, I have mixed feelings for Snapchat. And I know if you look online, you know, different forecasters will tell you, oh, Snapchat's definitely going to be the future because of Gen Z. But I actually don't think that. I think one, Snapchat has made some, you know, poor business decisions when it comes to getting in the hardware game. You know, they had some forty, fifty million dollar hits that didn't work out for them. But also, you know, while Gen Z use Snapchat a lot, they don't use it for the reason you think. They use it to text message each other. You know, I've I've talked to many kids between ten and thirteen, and I've read studies that show that kids use Snapchat messaging more than they use their actual phones messaging. Really? So they just use it as a texting platform but not necessarily as a content platform. They still use Instagram as their main content platform. And why is that? Well, probably because Instagram literally copied everything that Snapchat had and made it better. <laughs> That's and, true. You know, there's, there's no laws that said they couldn't or no copyright. So, you know, you have Instagram stories now. You have Instagram Live. You have IGTV. Instagram is pretty much, you know, they took what they had and made it better. They took what Snapchat had and made it better. And now they just keep building on it. So, you know, they have, you know, some people are like, well, what's Instagram stories? What's Instagram live? What's IGTV? So to break it down, Instagram's main focus is a feed that shares photos and videos. Then you have Instagram stories that are, you know, up top when you're looking at the, the platform. And that's just a 24 hour glimpse. So you don't want to necessarily post everything you capture throughout your day on your Instagram feed because typically you want to curate a kind of well rounded, nice feed. But if you have stuff throughout the day that's happening, Instagram stories is where you put it because it only lasts for 24 hours. Now, Instagram Live, that's something where maybe you're speaking at a conference or you're going to an event and you want people to experience what you're experiencing in a moment. That's where that goes. And then IGTV is just maybe you have a few video clips of one minute to two minutes and you just want to get it out there, but you want it to last a little longer than your Instagram stories. That's a perfect place for, you know, kind of more evergreen content to live on the platform. Okay, so let so me, let me, really let, let me, yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. Let me ask you a couple questions there. So basically the stories, right? The stories are yep. like, um, like Snapchat. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it pretty much, it lasts 24 hours. And okay. So that's exactly what Snapchat does, right? And then yep. the live is like Facebook live. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah, so it's, it's just, just all like combined in Instagram. Yeah, it's pretty much all rolled into one on Instagram. Uh, Instagram is actually my personal favorite platform. I know different people have different, you know, favorites, but Instagram is pretty much my go-to platform on on social. So you millennials, which you are, and the yep. Gen Z, is that where they're going? Yeah, I mean, it's really, you know, a lot of people, you know, I kind of touched on it in our previous episode, but a lot of people are starting to get away from Facebook. Now, I also said I think Facebook is going to be fine because they own Instagram and they own WhatsApp, the largest, you know, messaging platform on earth. But, they're, you know, and they're getting quickly into the hardware game, which a lot of people don't know about yet. But Facebook's going to be fine, I think. And But millennials and Gen Z, I mean, Gen Z, as I touched on before, they don't even, they think Facebook's for old people. They don't even care about (laughs) Facebook. And, you know, millennials are starting to get away from it. You know, the past three or four years, just because of, you know, kind of the political climate, you know, it's really made Facebook not the platform that it, it once was. You know, it used to be all about family, friends, sharing those moments. Now it's a lot of, you know, politics and people, you know, they're trying to go to social media to get away from their everyday issues and struggles and, you know, just the drama in the world. So people are getting more away from Facebook and more into Instagram or more into Snapchat. You know, on Instagram, you can't share articles, you know, news articles or politics. I mean, you can post pictures, but it's really an art or a, a platform that's built for inspiring. It's built for being creative. It's built for sharing, you know, fun and loving, you know, family moments. So, it's really the platform where people still go to kind of, you know, um, you know, just relax from their day. And so it's really the platform that I think a lot of people care about the most. If you look at research studies, it shows too that, you know, Instagram's the second most used platform and, you know, quickly catching up to Facebook. I don't think anybody will catch up to Facebook in terms of growth numbers, but in time spent and engagement, Instagram is definitely the place to go. I mean, you still have organic 
engagement possibilities on Instagram. You have zero of that on, on Facebook. So how That's many the great thing is how yeah. many users are on Facebook compared to how many users are on on Instagram? Oh man, I should probably have researched that before this, but I mean, Facebook's definitely you know it's hit the billion mark, which is insane if you think about the the world. But I mean, Instagram still. Oh man, if I had to guess, I you know. I know people are going to fact check me after this, <laughs> but I'd, I'd probably say, I don't know, ha- at least half as many, you know, 50 to 60%, I would say of the users on Facebook also have Instagram, which is actually the highest when you compare it to how many Facebook users also have a Snapchat or how many Facebook users also have a Twitter. So they definitely, if they have two platforms, Facebook and Instagram is the, the highest combo. I know that for sure. I just don't know the percentage, but you know, Instagram is really... The thing that's great for anybody who has a business, you know, you know, especially realtors too, is if you build a following on Instagram and you put out content, people will still see it. You can still, still get five, 10% engagement on a post that you didn't put money on. On Facebook, try creating a company page. If you have a hundred followers, no one is going to see that content. Facebook does, unless you, you know, Facebook is a pay to play platform. And unless you're putting money behind your Facebook post, no one is seeing it. So I always recommend Instagram to people when they're starting out because when you start to build those followers, you can you can actually see a return and people will still see your content, you know, before you have to spend large amounts of money to to get people to see that. So content. let me ask you about followers because you were just saying that. So previously on our other episode when we talked more about Facebook, you were saying impressions and things like that are important and, you know, talking about followers, you said, you know, not to worry about so much. So is Instagram something that we need to worry about followers? I mean, I mean, followers across the board, I mean, sure, you know, it's fun to look at, but I care more about engagement than I do followers. I mentioned previously, I would rather have half as many followers, but twice the engagement than vice versa. So how do we get engagement without followers then? I mean, engagement is all about your content. You know, if you're putting out solid content, you're, you're going to see higher engagement. The, the best, you know, example I can give you is put up a picture of you holding, you know, a garage sale sign and then put up a picture of you and a puppy. What do you yeah. think is going to get more engagement? I agree 100% puppy. puppy. So, it's, so it's all about the content. <laughs> or baby or kid, the, right? Your kids. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Uh, we always used to say there was, it, it was horrible, but back when it was the wild west of social, it was there was a trio that could get engagement. It was cute babies, cute puppies, and cute girls. <laughs> Those were the three things that got more engagement. And like all back then, when you could just post whatever content without the FCC coming down, that's honestly what every brand was posting. Those three things. But now it's about providing value to your followers. Well, as I mentioned previously. You know, people do not want to be sold all day. I mentioned the 80-20 rule on the previous episode, but my 80-20 rule is 80% of your content should be valuable, inspiring, creative. 20% you can do the hard sell. If you show me five posts and four of those taught me something or inspired me or gave me, you know, made me feel creative in a way, then that last post you have, I don't mind if you sell me. I don't mind if you put up a listing of, you know, a house you're trying to sell. I don't mind if you're trying to get me to come to your seminar or sell me a book. You know, I don't mind that because you've already provided me value for my life. So I don't mind giving a little back. Now, if five of those posts are all listings, I'm probably going to unfollow you pretty quickly because I don't want to be sold all day. No one wants to be sold anything in their lives. So you need to be, you know, given value in order to get that little bit in return of, oh, let me show you this listing or, oh, you know, sign up for my podcast or daily email or whatever. Well, you know, it, it's, it's really the thing that's important the most. Yeah. And, and, and one thing that we were talking about on the previous episode is uh, original content, right? So it needs to be original. Yeah. Original content, you know, I always say content is king, but original content is really important, especially on a platform like Instagram. You know, Facebook, you go there and you're expecting to see a video that went viral or uh, a news article from CNN or some video from the Daily News or whatever, you're expecting to see just repurposed content. Instagram, that's not what that platform is built for. That platform is built for original content. So people really want to see new things, whether it's you, you know, talking about a new trend or talking about a new issue that you care about or a, a 
you know, something valuable that that person can see that post, take away from it and be like, okay, I actually learned something. You need to be providing valuable content. I can never say it enough, but people want to learn stuff and people want to feel good when they look at your content. People do not want to be sold on every post. No, and that's and that's a really, really good point because the 80-20 rule, uh, always, always giving Okay, you can't give enough, right? You can't, uh, exactly. the information that you're sharing, the new content. Um, now, uh, how big are hashtags? I mean, hashtags, here's, here's my, my rule on hashtags as well. Every hashtag needs to have two things, a meaning and a purpose. And those things sound similar, but I'll, I'll explain. So say, you know, you don't want to put up a picture and just throw on 50 hashtags and pray that, you know, people are going to click on it. You know, you see that all day. People post a, a picture about them traveling on a vacation and then they tag all these like hashtag wanderlust, hashtag vacation. Ha- you know how many ha- hashtag vacations there are searched in the I mean, there's millions. You know, you want to, you know, so there's two things that they need to have, a meaning and a purpose. The meaning needs to be, what does this hashtag mean at the end of the day? Are you, you know, is it, you know, Boca Raton Realtor, is it Boca Raton Houses? Is it, you know, you know, if you're in fashion, is it, you know, Fashion Trends 2018? You know, what, what is the meaning behind it? What does it mean to your audience? Will they understand why you even posted that? And then the purpose is, what are you trying to get out of that hashtag? So at the end of the day, are you wanting people to search that hashtag to find your listing? You know, you, Whatever your hashtag is, it needs to be easily accessible to people searching similar hashtags on Instagram. But at the same time, people need to instantly understand what it means to them. So you really, you shouldn't just throw all these random hashtags on. You really need to think about, okay, what, you know, what do people search for? You can go to Instagram's search tool. This is a great thing to do, by the way. Go and look at, you know, type in, you know, if you're for your audience who, you know, I guess, uh, you know, a majority are realtors. Go to your, your city and see, you know, type in Los Angeles Realtor and then see what other hashtags come up. Kind of do some research and play around. And, you know, I wouldn't want my hashtag to be one that has a million searches. I prefer one to have, you know, 30 to 50,000 searches because it's going to be people that are much more, you know, you want to get real nitty gritty and you want to find people who are really boiling down and targeted. So what you're looking for, not just doing random hashtags that have millions of searches that people will probably never see because everybody's posting those hashtags. That's the thing. If you just type in, you know, hashtag real estate, you know, there's going to be millions of those posts every day. Whereas if you do real hashtag real estate, Boca Raton, you know, listing or something, it, it's probably going to be people who are searching for much greater things that are valuable to you and to your business. Oh my gosh, that is such a that, that is such a good point right there that you made. So, how many hashtags should I use, and what about Facebook and Instagram? I mean, what's the difference as far as hashtags? You know, yeah, I mean, hashtags on Facebook. I mean, people still use them. You know, hashtags now are, you know, it's like you know, you even see people on TV they use it in their in their your your daily life, your your normal talking to people. I mean, I you know when you gave me that intro at the beginning, I was like hashtag shout out. Because uh-huh. you know, people just use it in their everyday, you know, lives. But so on Facebook, I kind of see it like that. I mean, people use hashtags on Facebook, but it's not really a platform where people are searching those hashtags. I mean, obviously, the, you know, quote unquote, creator of the making hashtag popular was Twitter. But, you know, it's, you know, on Instagram, it's still something where Instagram has a, a portion of the platform carved out to hashtags and Instagram's trying to build up their search capabilities more they they want people browsing content they that they don't follow more so hashtags are definitely important i would say you know when you're talking about quantity i would say do no more than two or three on instagram because you don't want to you don't want a flood of 40 one it just looks spammy you're you know no one if you have 40 hashtags or 20 hashtags no one's going to read them all no one cares about that and you're just you know instagram's also going to think that you're spamming as well instagram doesn't like their algorithm doesn't like when people, it thinks people are trying to, you know, gauge the system or trying to, you know, you can put up 200 hashtags. Instagram's not going to, you know, value you for doing that. So I would say two to three hashtags, maybe one kind of broader one and two that are more fine tuned to your exact area or what you're looking for. And I would say that's, that's really all you need. It, it, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't have to be, and you don't have to do it on every post. That's the other thing. You, 
you know, while it's good because it'll help your content be searchable, you don't want to overdo it with your users. So your users, your followers think every day, oh man, it's just the same hashtag we always see. Like you need to be new. You need to be fresh, you know, have new creative hashtags. You can also do fun hashtags. They don't all have to be, once again, sell, sell, sell. I would almost do, you know, it doesn't have to be 80-20 rule, but maybe a 50-50 rule. Like you can do fun hashtags in the copy as much as you do informative ones as well. So it really just depends on what you're trying to accomplish with what I said earlier, the meaning and purpose of the hashtag. Well, that's a great tip. And so in Instagram, um, because I want to get to Facebook or to YouTube as well for a few minutes, but so for, for Instagram, you know, what can we do that's going to, you know, to market, but also, like you said, you know, make sure that you're giving them content and value because they're going to want to engage and follow and things like that. But so what can we do on Instagram? And also, how can we gain business on Instagram? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, definitely start, I mean, I think following the 80-20 rule on Instagram, especially in real estate, is key. I've I have many friends who are realtors and some posts, all they post every day is listings. 